that tells us uh, that tells us that the absolute value of x minus one times the absolute value of x plus three must be less than epsilon, which implies that the absolute value of x minus one must be less than epsilon over the absolute value of x plus three. Okay, so <clears throat> we could choose this as our delta. Okay, but what we want to choose is we want to choose a delta that's only specified in terms of epsilon. Okay, and you can see that this particular delta, we know that x minus one is less than this particular value. Okay, um, so what we really need to try to figure out is we need to figure out a a bound, an upper bound on this x minus one, okay, that isn't doesn't involve x plus three. Okay? But what we do know is this: is that uh, the limit approaches that the function approaches the limit near a, if that makes sense. So let's restrict, let's restrict, let's restrict, have a restriction in relation to in in, in relation to around a, and let's restrict it to be let's say less than one, and let's see what happens here. Okay? So what we're going to do now is this: is let's Let's restrict, okay? Well, let's restrict our x minus our x minus one, okay, uh, to be in fact less than less than one. So we're we the difference between the x values in the range and where the limit is, to, uh, where the x's are the x's are near where the a value, okay? We're saying that we want to be within one of that in relation to in relation to our evaluation. Well, what does this tell us? So from here. Uh, this implies this implies that minus one must be less than x minus one, which must be less than one. And what does this tell us? So we're going to try to we're going to try to see from this particular restriction, looking at values that are near a within one unit of a, we're going to see can we uh, understand what's happening with x plus three, the absolute value of x plus three. Okay? So what we could do here is how can I change this into the absolute value of x plus three? Hmm. Well, if I added four on here, that would become the absolute value of x plus three. So let's add four right across here. So this implies that minus one plus four must be less than x minus one plus four, which must be less than one plus four. Okay, this implies that three is less than x plus three, which is less than five. So what we now know is this, okay? So just recall, recall from our previous page here, Okay, that x minus one is less than epsilon over x plus three. Okay, so under this restriction, what we've just figured out is this: is that is that uh, x plus three reaches its maximum at five, or very close to five. Okay, and would reach its minimum very close to three. So, what we have here is this: is that is that x plus three reaches its minimum, its min near near three and it reaches its maximum near near five okay but let's consider let's consider okay, what we had earlier let's consider this particular inequality here okay again yeah so don't forget we're trying to find this epsilon but the problem here is that the epsilon that we're trying to find a delta but the problem here is that we could choose this as a delta but it's defined in terms of x's as well as epsilons and we just want to define in terms in terms of epsilons so let's just consider this again x minus one is less than epsilon over the absolute value of x plus three and let's see what happens with this restriction. So you can actually see that under this restriction that we have x plus three must be bigger than three and less than five. So you can actually see that when we when this becomes a maximum, well, when does this become when this becomes a maximum, this whole thing epsilon over x plus three becomes a smaller number. Okay. Okay, if that makes sense, yeah. So really what we have is this is that is that <coughs> excuse me. Really, what we now have is this: is that uh, is that epsilon uh, over x plus three? Okay, so that epsilon over x plus three reaches reaches a minimum. Okay, a minimum when x is near when x is near near five. Okay, so what we now have is this: is we could now consider. <coughs> excuse me. We now could consider that. Uh, x minus one is in fact so now we could actually consider that x minus one is in fact less than epsilon 
over five and we could choose that as our delta okay so from our restriction our initial restriction we have one delta which is that x minus one is less than one and under that particular condition when we work through we found a restriction in relation to x plus three uh, which tells us that when x plus three reaches its it reaches its minimum near three and reaches its maximum near five. Okay, this is a bigger number when we put in x is equal to five. It's a smaller number when we put in x is equal to three. So epsilon divided by a bigger number gives us a smaller eps it gives us a smaller upper bound here. So now what we have is we have actually two deltas. So we have uh, epsilon over five, and we have uh, we have we have one. Okay. So now the delta that we're going to choose. For, so now that we found our deltas, okay, so we just we just found appropriate appropriate. I spelled that wrong there. Yeah, Appro I don't know why I always spelled that wrong. Appropriate, okay, deltas. Okay, that's what we found. Yeah, actually, the deltas that we found is that the delta is 